hey, you can get some cool and fun rewards for helping me help kids. Stick around after the video for more information. The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Right now I'm going to attempt to examine the Bible and dissect some of the churchy language that we can easily take for granted, digging into history and languages when I'm able to, tr to try and get the heart of the text so that we can hopefully see and then apply at least some of what God has for us in these words today. Now, I'm not formally trained in scripture. I'm just a guy using resources and a questioning mind to try and get at the truth. That's something that we can all do. So I hope that you will do that with me. We are in the book of Philippians and we're in chapter one. We've arrived at verses 15 through I'll say 18a, which in the ESV reads, Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. So uh, just starting with that first verse, 15, some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. <clears throat> In the verses leading up to these, Paul had mentioned that most Christians had become emboldened by Paul's imprisonment and were sharing the gospel uh, much more confidently. However, in these verses, he does acknowledge that some of those Christians were engaging in ministry out of envy and rivalry toward Paul. Verse 16 again says, The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. So we have this uh, one category of Christians emboldened in the right way that were motivated by love, seeing that God had placed Paul in prison with a purpose. The use of the Greek word for put here, when he says, I am put here for the defense of the gospel, contains the idea of being set by God's intent. Other translations even say appointed. While many would see Paul as the victim of his current circumstances, he recognized the rule of God over all things and that he was only imprisoned because it served Yahweh's purposes for Paul, for those around him, and uh, as you and I have benefited from, you know, the whole world. Now look at uh, verse 17. Again, that says, the former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. So here's this other category of emboldened Christians preaching the gospel uh, motivated uh, and emboldened in the wrong way, motivated by selfish ambition. They evidently had an attitude of rivalry of some kind toward Paul to the point where they wanted to distress him as a result of their ministry work. Uh, although the specifics of how they thought that their ministry work was going to distress him are not laid out here. So we don't really know what the thinking was there. Verse 18 then, Paul says, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. This is really striking to me and thought-provoking. He draws this clear distinguishing line between the character of a minister and the teaching uh, of that minister, the teaching of their ministry. He doesn't say that their motives are not a problem. Uh, he clearly identifies them as sin in verse 17, but despite their motives, he looks at their teaching, evaluates it, and sees that Christ is still being proclaimed. He validates and even celebrates the teaching, even while calling out the sin of the teacher. Okay, so what's in all this, maybe specifically or especially for geeks? Uh, I was thinking, as I looked at these verses, just reflecting on how a lot of us geeks have little to no motivation to be connected to the local church. Uh, as much as I uh, want to point uh, all of you watching or listening to me to your local churches, uh, I myself do not, do not naturally feel drawn to the local church. Yes, I'm very involved. Yes, I'm very committed to my local church. Does that come naturally to me? Is that a natural thing that I'm drawn toward because it's pleasurable to me? No. Uh, it, it, it goes against kind of my, uh, my, my uh, natural tendencies. Um, and so I think that's true of a lot of us, that a lot of us geeks, we just don't have any motivation and interest in being connected to the local church. And one reason that we might cite for that 
is the hypocrisy among Christians or even Christian teachers. And sin and hypocrisy are sadly common realities among local church leaders, also among celebrated uh, Christian teachers that are they're sort of celebrities in the Christian world. In fact, months after his passing, now, the, the highly celebrated and respected Christian thinker and defender of the faith, Ravi Zacharias, is being investigated for allegations of recurring sexual sin. Now, how that turns out, we're going to have to wait and see, but we may still be wondering uh, how we should think and feel about those who lead and teach among Christians while we learn they are harboring secret sin or, or selfish motivations. I think Paul's example here indicates that we should recognize and identify sin for what it is. Not making excuses for it and holding Christians accountable for sin when we are in a position to do so. At the same time, even as we mourn the effects of sin in a teacher's life, we can still celebrate and be thankful for the good ministry work they have done because the work can be good even when the worker is not. The Bible is filled with highly regarded instruments of God who also had terrible moral failings, including Noah, Moses, and of course, David. We recognize the tragedy of their sins, and yet that doesn't stop us and shouldn't stop us from benefiting from the truth that they spoke, that the Holy Spirit used them to convey. Because the truth does not become untrue when its messenger turns away from God's will. So, like Paul, our response should not be to reject just anything and everything associated with a sinful Christian, but should instead be to avoid putting our teachers on pedestals, even as we respect their teachings and hold on to those things we recognize are truth from God delivered through a flawed messenger. If you'd like some help finding a good church in your area, I would love to help you do that if I can. Online resources and communities are good supplements, but by nature they just can't speak to your particular situation like relationships in a local church can. The context for almost everything in the New Testament assumes that we're serving and building purposeful relationships in a local church. So whether you're in a church that just kind of lacks Bible-based intentionality or maybe not attending any church at all, if I can help you get connected connected to an authentic, compassionate, Bible-oriented church, I want to do that. Uh, you can email me at paeter at spiritblade.com, and we can look at some websites of churches in your area together.